Hello everybody! Let's take a quick look at Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, directed by Jake Kasdan and starring The Rock, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Karen Gillan. Jumanji, that mystical board game we all know and love, has somehow transformed itself from a board game into a video game. There's actually a scene in the movie where we see this happen. And four teenagers somehow find themselves sucked into the game, and they have to find a way to beat the game without dying. More than twice. They have three lives. So this was surprisingly not half bad. I was actually kind of impressed. I did not have very high expectations for this one, but it's all right. It's got a very simple but effective setup. A bunch of kids end up in detention. They find this weird-ass video game stashed in the storage area in their school, and they get sucked into the world of Jumanji. And technically, I guess this is a Christmas movie because it takes place during that time, although Christmas doesn't actually factor into the plot. Of course, the big selling point here is we have these four big-name actors who are playing teenagers trapped in other people's bodies. And for the most part, it works. First, you got Spencer, played by Alex Wolf, and his video game avatar is The Rock. And he has every strength imaginable and no weaknesses in the movie as in real life. And The Rock does a really good job of acting like this scared little nerd trapped inside the body of Big McLarge Huge. Then there's Martha, played by Morgan Turner, whose avatar is Karen Gillan. And she is a socially awkward girl who is criminally incapable of flirting, which Karen pulls off so well. There is a scene where she has a certain walk and... Oh God, that was hysterical. Then there's Bethany, played by Madison Iceman, whose avatar is, unfortunately, Jack Black. And Black was having entirely too much fun with this part, but he did a really good job. I totally bought that somewhere inside that overweight middle-aged man was a scared little teenage girl who was freaking out because she couldn't find her smartphone. And on a side note, I don't know if Black gets enough credit as an actor because he is so talented. And then you have... The fourth kid, who is called Fridge. Huge friggin' football player dude. He is played by Sir Darius Blaine, and that's a problem, because the character is supposed to be a high school senior. That guy does not look like a high school senior. Motherfucker, you look 30. And when I got home, I checked his IMDb page. Motherfucker, he is 30! He was born in 87, he is actually 30! And his avatar is Kevin Hart, who was really just playing himself. He was still funny, still had his moments, but it just really didn't fit with what Johnson, Black, and Gillen were doing. I look at those three and I see teenagers trapped in other people's bodies. I look at Kevin Hart, I see Kevin Hart. As far as making it look like these four people were trapped inside a video game, I thought they pulled that off quite nicely. There are a lot of different things going on here. You have NPCs with very limited dialogue options, so you gotta make sure you ask the right questions. There's the occasional unskippable cutscene. They even find exploits in the game, which was pretty clever. And there are some bits of just random weirdness that feel like they came out of an old-school point-and-click adventure game. I half expected Kevin Hart to reach into his backpack of holding and pull out a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. And speaking of that random weirdness, this is no fault of the movie. I want to make that very clear. This is not the movie's problem. This is a failure in marketing. The cake. That should not have been in the trailer, because that would have been so much more effective if I did not see it coming. It's a good joke, the movie does it well, it's just the trailer ruined it. But yeah, this is basically an old school video game on hard mode. Three lives, no continues. At least I assume there are no continues, but we never actually find out for sure if that's the case, come to think of it. They never do actually get to the point where every single character loses all three of their lives. Maybe if they did, it would just fade to black and then, resuming from last checkpoint, and they all pop back up. Who knows? And in fact, if that did happen, I could totally see Kevin Hart's character just losing his mind over that. And of course, they have to contend not just with the hazards of the jungle, but the villain, played by Bobby Cannavale. And there's really not a whole lot to this character. He's just a stereotypical bad guy who wants to take over the world. But considering they're in an old school video game, that actually kind of fits. One thing I did not get with the villain, there is a scene where he's shown plotting 
how he's going to destroy our heroes with his henchmen, and somehow he is doing all of this, and the heroes are completely unaware of this. They're playing a video game. Shouldn't that have been a cutscene? Like, shouldn't they have been able to actually see that happening? Bit of a misstep. Honestly, this movie is probably not going to win any awards. I don't expect it'll end up in my year-end top 10. But I was pleasantly surprised by this. It's all right. And honestly, I could recommend it as a matinee. Assuming you haven't already seen Star Wars. See that first, and then if you have time, check this out. And that's about it for Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. So until next time, take care.